Hi, welcome to Scientific Figure Preparation in Adobe Illustrator and Fiji. I'm Sarah Smith from the Stowers Institute for Medical Research, and this is part six, color. So we'll talk about libraries and swatches, um, how to manage different color schemes, the Adobe Color Tool, extracting color palettes from existing images, select same to edit all of the things that are one color, and colorblind view. Let's get started. So remember last time we made this figure. It looks pretty nice. We have three graphs and an image panel and they're all nicely aligned. All of our text is good. The sizes are good. We're feeling good about ourselves. So we take it to our boss and the boss says, great, good job, but you need to do a hundred more experiments and also I don't like your colors. This is really common. PIs are pretty particular about colors usually, and um, so if it happens to you, don't feel bad about it. But if it does happen to you, you may be wondering, well, I'm a scientist and I don't really know very much about this. How do I choose colors that people will like, that look good? Um, but remember that Adobe is made for people who do design. It's made for illustration, designers, logos, all that. So they actually have a lot of tools to help you with colors and choosing colors. So if we open up color.adobe.com and here we're under trends, we can see all kinds of different color combinations that have been made by designers and illustrators um, for project ideas. And so you can explore in here and see if there are any color combinations that's, that stand out to you as being something that you like um, or that fits in with lab, your lab's previous publications. Um, some suggestions I have, it's uh, often good to look under game design because those have uh, multicolor selections, um, which can be good for displaying data. You can also... Um, go under trends or under explore where you can look at their featured colors but also you can look at most popular and that can be this week this month or all time and if you find one that you like so say I like this one or maybe this one this has some nice colors in it you can click on it and then just click Add to library. And since I was already on my Smith 2020 library, it added to that. And then when I come in to Illustrator, into libraries, Smith 2020, and scroll down and see that color theme is there. So I can use it now in my project. But what if I don't want to search for my own color color palette. What if I want to use one that's already been used in the lab, I know my boss likes, um, or one that I've seen somewhere that I just, that really calls out to me. Uh, Adobe has a tool for extracting color palettes. So we'll go under, instead of trends, we'll go under create. And here they have a tool where you can just make your own color palette from scratch, but they also have this image where we can extract a color palette from an image. So I'm going to go over to this publication that I did with Sue Jasperson in 2019 and Jingjing Chen, which has really nice colors in it that I know Sue likes. So say I'm going to make something for Sue and I'm just going to give it to her in this color palette so that hopefully she'll like it. So I have taken a screenshot of just this graph right here that has the red, blue, orange, in it. I have it here. Just, just a little screenshot. And I'm going to go over to my Adobe window and I'm going to drag and drop that into this image window. And it automatically extracts the color palette that I have in here. So there's the purple, blue, yellow, green, all the colors. So what I want, um, just for my own ease, I'm going to arrange it into the same order that she had it. 
perfectly simple and then I'm going to name it um, color theme Chen Colors perfectly reasonable name I'll leave it as that and I can leave publish to color on or off that will make the color palette available to other people um, I'm not going to do that right now because um, I want to keep it in my lab but it's up to you and then I'm going to click save and so that's saving to my library Smith 2020 if I go into Illustrator and I go under libraries again I will see my color palette right here okay so I have this color palette I really like it and I'm going to use it for my figures so the first thing I need to do is right click on it and choose add theme to swatches and what that does is puts it in here now this is my color theme that I'm going to use for all of my graphs and I have I can use these colors just like I can use this regular color library up here um, I can use I can put it in fills or in lines which are called strokes in Illustrator and do everything that I need to do okay so what I need to do is I need to recolor all of my graphs so that they're a little bit more logical and I'm consistently using color across my whole paper so in this paper I have well type I have mute one and mute two which are things that I'm um, concerned about and so I'm going to try to consistently color well type in this dark blue or this medium blue here I'm going to con color mute one as red and mute two as orange okay so I'm going to just start with this um, graph right and um, panel B and so I'll click I'm going to use my black color clicker and um, remember this panel this whole thing's ungrouped I could also use this white one which selects them individually uh, selects things individually but I'm going to use the black one it doesn't matter right now um, so I'm going to go under select same fill color and that's going to not only get these bars but it'll also get this little block in the legend so I would make sure that my legend matches my color bars and I'm just going to make sure I'm on fill and I'm going to click my blue that I want no problem I, now I just changed those wild types now I'm going to change these wild types select same fill color you'll notice that this blue square this blue square that highlights what's all selected it's not just on panel C now it's also on panel D that's because these blue little circles are the same color fill as these bars which is okay they're wild type 2 I want them to be blue I'm gonna go ahead and let them be blue I'll click blue for my fill and then coming over here to do wild type I'm gonna zoom in a little bit I need to color these lines I need to color the lines that are around the dots I need to color the lines that are in between the dots I need to color the um, error bars so I'm going to just click on one of the things I'm going to, going to, going to select same stroke color all right and I'll zoom out and make sure okay nothing else weird is selected it selected all the um, it selected both the circles and the lines in this graph and so I'm going to choose stroke and color it my blue color that did not change my error bars I have to make sure that my error bars also get changed so you have to be you know keep make sure your bookkeeping is on track and that you're you're getting everything so I'm going to zoom out again select same stroke color that's just getting our error error bars making them blue 
All right, and so I'll do the same thing for the other colors. Um, I'll make my wild, my mute one red and my mute two um, orange. Uh, I will, so I'll go ahead and do my mute one right now. Okay, so we'll start with this. Select same fill color, and those are gonna be red. That's just choosing these, okay, good. Red, oops, and I was on stroke. I don't want that, I'm gonna go back to no stroke, which is this white with a red line through it. Okay, red, fill. Here I'm going to go select same fill color, and I ran into a problem, which is that this orange is a mute one, this orange is a mute two. I could have made sure that didn't happen back when I was making my Excel graphs, but sometimes you don't, you're not in charge of, of your, your graph to begin with, and you need to recolor something. So I'm going to start over here, and I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to click on the bars, and choose my proper orange and click on using my white tool because this is grouped and I want to leave it grouped so I'm just going to select one thing within the group and use my white tool white selection tool um, I will the direct it's called the direct selection tool I'll choose the proper orange and then I want mute 2 to be orange so I'll zoom in a little bit make sure that I can see my other graphs in case something goes wrong. So this one I can go ahead and use the same select, same fill color, turn that to, this is mute two, so it's orange. And I can do select, same stroke color also. I have to be careful about what I select. That's green, good. Select, same, stroke color, orange. Oops, not the fill. We want the fill to be, no fill. So that's the white with the line through it. Orange. This. Let's see if we can use our select same on this. I think we should be able to because the oranges are slightly different. Yeah, looks fine. Looks like we just got the circles. That should be red. Not the line. Well, the line too, but the fill. And then stroke color. I'm going to change to red and error bars red. And let's make sure that these error bars are the right color too. Yeah, they're fine. Okay, great. So all of our all of our graphs are the right colors. We have mute, mute one consistently red, mute two consistently orange, and wild type consistently blue. And that way when we're making our models and our other figures, people will be able to follow it a little better because we'll have consistent coloring throughout our figure. But, um, so you may have some questions related to color blindness, because remember we chose pink and green for our colors for our images because those colors are more accessible to um, people who have color blindness. And Adobe Illustrator has a really good tool for being able to tell if your color palette is accessible to colorblind people. If you go under View Proof Setup, then you can choose one of these two types of colorblind view. So if we choose Protonopia, we'll see what it might look like to a colorblind person. 
um, who has protonopia. So you can see we can tell the difference between our orange and our red color, um, and we can tell the difference in, in our blue color as well. So this is a good colorblind palette. You can see in our image, because we have three colors, red, ma or, uh, magenta, green, and blue, it's, it's still going to be hard to tell the difference in all three colors. But we selected our channel so that you can see the important features of the mitochondria here in blue, which is a lighter blue when it's viewed by a colorblind person, um, versus the um, actin, which is more yellow. So you can see all the features that are important and we put our single channel images in so that people who do have trouble distinguishing red and green are able to, do, to see what's needed to be communicated in our figure. Um, and if you're wondering about um, how to design colorblind palettes, I'm going to go back to my regular view. I'll turn off proof colors. Back to my regular view. I have um, made a color wheel here that's a regular color wheel and then a color wheel with that colorblind view applied to it. And you can see that basically there are two primary colors for people experiencing colorblindness um, or people who have colorblindness. They can see blue and that is just people who have red green colorblindness can see blue distinct from basically red, green, yellow combined. Yellow is generally lighter, um, and uh, but red and green are indistinguishable. So if you're, if you're making a color palette, remember that you want to be sort of in one of these transition ranges or across this transition range where you have blue or magenta, which read as, as one color, versus your green or your orange or yellow. And that you also work in different amounts of darkness or lightness so that they can distinguish between your different colors. Okay, so um, let's cover one last thing, which is say you get everything set up, so now everything is colored consistently, um, but maybe you decide that you want to change one of the colors. Maybe you want your red to be a little darker, or maybe you want to change your colors entirely. But you don't want to go through um, all of that. Um, uh, you, can, you can still do select same fill color, but if you want to just do everything all at once, you can actually change your swatch colors and it'll change the whole thing. And this is how you do it. Um, edit edit colors wait first we have to first we have to select our whatever we're going to color we can we can select the whole thing edit edit colors recolor artwork okay so this shows us all of the colors that appear in our figure so this is another place where we can make sure that we don't have any colors we aren't expecting. We have our green and our magenta from our figure. We have our red, orange, and blue from our graphs. And then we have some grays and whites and blacks. Looks great. But say we want to change our red to be much darker. All I have to do, click on that, change. I can change it to be dark. Let's even, we can make it purple. We want it to be dark purple. Okay, so it, it was red. Now it is purple. New is purple. I click OK. Bam! Everything's changed to purple. Super easy. So here's another way similar to character styles where once you get it set up, you can easily manage it and control, you know, change things um, when you're in your revisions. So I hope that's helpful to you. That's all, all about color, and I'll see you next time.